The Chang'e 6 mission landed on the far side of the moon. The Chinese lander of the Chang'e 6 mission successfully landed in the Apollo crater in the South Pole Aitken Impact Basin. The mission's goal is to collect samples and deliver them to Earth. The China National Space Administration CNSA, announced the successful landing of the Chang'e 6 mission probe in the Apollo crater, which is part of a larger structure called the South Pole Aitken Basin. It is the largest known impact structure in the entire solar system and the oldest on the Moon. The probe will collect samples of lunar soil and rocks from the surface of the silver globe. He will also use a drill to reach material located up to 2 meters below the lunar surface. Once it collects samples of lunar material and conducts the planned experiments, it is to return with the valuable material to Earth. If everything goes according to plan, Chang'e 6 will deliver the first ever samples of material from this part of the Moon to Earth. The mission sent as part of the Chang'e space program was launched at the beginning of May. The program concerns a mission to the Moon, and its name comes from the Chinese goddess of the Moon. The first missions of the Chang'e program, Chang'e 1 and Chang'e 2, included orbital flights around the Silver Globe. The third and fourth installments of the program include landings on the lunar surface, including the first ever landing on the far side. The Chang'e 5 mission and the current one are sample return missions, i.e. designed to return samples from the Moon to Earth. Built by CNSA scientists, the probe is over 7 meters high and weighs 8 tons. It was carried into space by the Long March 5th rocket from the spaceport on Hainan Island in southern China. The spacecraft consists of a lunar orbiter, a lander, a launcher, and a return capsule. Operations conducted on the far side require a communications satellite to act as a relay station for communication between the lander and Earth. This role is fulfilled by the Kuekiao 2 satellite, launched in March which is equipped with an over 4-meter antenna. The Chang'e 6 mission is the first human mission to collect samples and deliver them to Earth from the far side of the Moon. It involves many engineering innovations, high risks and great difficulties, CNSA officials wrote in the release. The Chang'e 6 mission reached the Silver Globe's orbit a few days after launch. She spent the next few weeks researching the planned landing site. The maneuver itself was successful. The lander settled in the Apollo crater in the South Pole Aitken Basin, leaving the mission orbiter with its attached Earth return module in lunar orbit. The lander will spend its first days examining its surroundings. It will then collect about 2 kilograms of lunar material, this material will then be launched into lunar orbit. The sample container will rendezvous with the Chang'e 6 orbiter and then make the long journey back to Earth. The landing of the samples is scheduled for June 25th. Scientific analyzes of these returned lunar samples using modern methods and techniques can reveal new information about the formation and evolution of the Moon and, by extension, the entire solar system said Professor Mahesh Anand of the Open University. The South Pole Aitken Basin is a huge impact structure on the far side of the Moon. Material from the depths of the Moon was probably extracted during the impact. This means that these samples could have preserved details about the chemistry and history of the region that we had no access to before. This will provide us with information about how the Moon's surface was formed and maybe we will also learn something about the object that hit the Moon, creating the South Pole Aitken Basin, emphasized Professor Neil Bowles from the University of Oxford. The plant with the largest genome of all organisms on Earth. A small, inconspicuous fern that grows only on a few remote Pacific islands has the largest genome of any organism on Earth, scientists have found. The human genome consists of approximately 3 billion base pairs. 
but that's nothing compared to Gemisipterus oblanceolate. This fern growing on the islands of New Caledonia contains as many as 160 billion base pairs in its genome, making it the record holder in terms of genome size. The discovery could help scientists understand how genomes become so large and how these huge sets of genes affect the adaptability and survival of species. The description and research results of scientists from the Royal Botanic Gardens in Kew and the Institut Botanic de Barcelona IBB, in Spain were published in the journal iScience. Tamisipterus oblanceolate is a rare species of fern found in New Caledonia, a French overseas territory located in the southwest Pacific Ocean, approximately 1,400 km east of Australia. The genus Tamisipterus is an understudied group of plants consisting of approximately 15 species, most of which occur on Pacific Islands and Oceania. So far, Scientists have estimated the genome sizes of only two Tamisipterus species, Tamisipterus tanensis and Tamisipterus obliqua. Both are huge, containing over 73 and over 147 billion base pairs, respectively. New analyses have shown that Tamisipterus oblanceolate has a record-breaking genome of 160 billion base pairs. That's about 7%. More than the previous record holder, Paris Japonica, whose genome has nearly 150 billion base pairs. Tamisipterus is a unique and fascinating little genus of fern whose ancestors evolved approximately 350 million years ago, long before dinosaurs appeared on Earth. It is an epiphyte, it grows mainly on tree trunks and branches. For a long time we thought that breaking the previous record for the size of the Paris Japonica genome would be an impossible mission, but once again the limits of biology have exceeded our most optimistic predictions. Based on our previous studies, we predicted the existence of giant genomes in Tamisipterus. The discovery of the largest genome of all is not just an achievement in scientific exploration, but the result of an almost 14-year journey into the limitless complexity and diversity of plant genomes," said Dr. Haume Pelliser from IBB. So far, scientists from all over the world have estimated the size of the genomes of over 20,000 eukaryotic organisms, revealing in the process a wide range of genome sizes across the tree of life. These have a profound impact not only on their anatomy, as larger genomes require larger cells to house them and take longer to replicate, but also on how they function, evolve, and where and how they live. Among animals, the largest genome identified so far has the Abyssinian protoplankton, Protopterus ethiopicus. The genome of this fish has nearly 130 billion base pairs. However, six of the ten largest genomes belong to plants. As it turns out, having a larger genome is usually not an advantage. In plants, species with large amounts of DNA are restricted to slow-growing perennials, are less efficient at photosynthesis, and require more nutrients to grow and compete successfully with neighbors with smaller genomes. This may affect the plant's ability to adapt to climate change and its risk of extinction. Who would have thought that this tiny, inconspicuous plant, which most people would probably ignore, could break the world record for genome size? Compared to other organisms, plants are incredibly diverse when viewed at the DNA level, which should make us think about their value in the larger picture of global biodiversity. This discovery also raises many new and exciting questions about the upper limits of what is biologically possible, and we hope to one day solve these mysteries," said Dr. Ilya Leach of the Royal Botanic Gardens, Q. The larger the genome, the more constraints there are on ecological possibilities and the ability to grow and compete successfully with other plants. 
Thus, species with the largest genomes, such as Paris japonica or Demisipterus oblanceolate, tend to live in very stable environments that are not competitive, leech added.